Hello, Adam Ryan Donato. Hello, hello. We're back here again with another hard review. And this time we have a very special guest, uh, the, the creator of the Film Fan Reviews. Uh, we have Steve Barton here. Say hello. Hey, everybody. What's going on? Uh, what's up? We are here today uh, in a reunion. It's been a while since we reviewed a movie together. Very long time. Yeah. Since the uh, what- laugh, old laugh podcast, you know? Yeah. What, what was the last one we did? Was it, was it Madagascar? It was right around there. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But we did Madagascar, Matrix, yep. and um, Dora. Uh, what? We did Dora together. Dora. You know, I finally got uh, one of my friends to watch it. And he was like mad at me afterwards, too. He was like, yeah, no, it wasn't good. You didn't love- surprise me at all. <laughs> I love it. I still love it. No, I love it, too. I actually recently rewatched it. Um, but today we are talking about uh, The Green Knight. And this is a new movie that came out. It's supposed to come out May, like Labor, not Labor Day weekend. What's it? Uh, Memorial Day weekend? Yep. Of 2020. But then everyone started getting sick for some reason. And so I got pushed back. <laughs> and uh, I, you, you wouldn't believe how many times I've made that exact joke. It's still good. <laughs> but um, yeah, so this is a David Lowry movie. Uh, so how do you feel about David Lowry, the director? You know... I am a fan of his. I mean, I watched a ghost story actually with you for the first time. I think I fell asleep watching it, but I still really enjoyed it. I need to rewatch it, but The Old Man and the Gun is still one of my favorite movies of 2019, I think is when it came out. Yes. I really, really love that movie. So yeah, I'm a, I'm definitely a fan of his. So going into this, I had expectations for sure. Have you seen Ain't Them Bodies Saints? No. That's the movie he did in 2013, also with Casey Affleck and I think Rooney Mara. I'm not positive. And maybe Alicia Vikander. I, I'm pretty sure it's Rooney Mara. Okay. Because um, I remember seeing it and thinking, oh, it's a reteam of um, a ghost story. I'm actually really surprised I didn't see Ain't Them Body States because it's 2013. Yeah. And yeah. I saw 120 new movies that year. Like that's still my record for a year. And um, I missed it. That's crazy. That's on my watch list now, but uh, yes, my history with <clears throat> my history with Dave Lowry is a ghost story was the first movie I saw of his. That was my favorite movie. Excuse me. Sorry. Second favorite movie of 2017. And then um, I'm pretty sure old man, the gun made my top 10 of 2019 and Pete's dragon is fine. I still haven't ever seen that one. I mean, I watched the original movie as a kid, but I just never watched that remake. I'm sure it. I'm sure the original is fine. Also, I, that's the, I'm the opposite. I've only seen the remake uh, because I was like, "Oh, well, it's David Lowry, so you know why not?" Yeah. Um, what's it called? And actually, it was surprising to me after watching this movie, like and looking into what he was doing. Uh, he's doing the Peter Pan and uh, Wendy. Oh, did not know Which, that. Yeah, another Disney live action. The posters just, you know, black background with just the words Peter Pan and Wendy, and. Um, and uh, the cast looks all right, but like, I don't know about you, but like, that makes me sad. Yeah. I'll still uh, probably watch it, but yeah. Uh, what's it called? You saw the Mulan, right? The remake or the live action one? No, I didn't actually. The live a- You didn't see the live action Mulan? Nope. I'm a big fan of the original, but I just never watched it just because I didn't want to. I'll probably get around to it. I just haven't yet. Well, at least that's not the worst thing you could have said. The worst thing you could have said is that you paid $30 for premier access. Have you done that yet? No, I haven't. I will. Yeah, good. I would have judged you. I would judge anyone. (laughs) That's the official stance of hard. If you pay $30 for a movie, I will judge you. Um, To rent. To rent. That's the craziest part. Well, it's on your Disney Plus, right? Oh, yeah, that is true. I think you own it, but it goes on Disney Plus later anyway. So you like... It's kind of just a rental, really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's it called? That being said, though, my point is I love David Lowry. Um, this movie was one of my more anticipated movies. Of the- well, I stopped making most anticipated lists after last year because yeah. uh, that just was depressing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, what's it called? I definitely was one of the ones I was more excited about just because of the director. And also, I'm a fan of Dev Patel. Do you like Dev Patel? You know, I never saw Slumdog Millionaire still, but the first time I actually saw him, I think, was that Hotel Mumbai movie that came out in 2019, and I really liked him in that, so 
I am a fan, but I need to see more stuff from him for sure. You know, it's funny. I haven't seen Hotel Mumbai. The only things I've seen from him is Slumdog Millionaire, because you know me and the Oscars, mm-hmm. um, which, which great, great movie, great little movie. Um, it's not bad in the Dark Knight. Um, yeah. I, I love the concept of someone hearing me say that sentence and not knowing the connection and just being like, yeah, I guess, like every movie <laughs> I name. It's just, well, it's not better than The Dark Knight, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, well, it's 2008. It won Best Picture in Dark Knight. wasn't even nominated, um, which is interesting. Then Tragedy. I've seen Lion. Did you see Lion? No, I forgot about Lion, actually. That was one of those, like, Oscar Beatty uh, mm-hmm. ones. Like, what, like, what do you think, 2014, 16? I want to say 16. I think it was 16. It was definitely later, I think. Yeah. Uh, that being said, though, um, it was fine. I think it was Nicole Kidman in that. Yep. Um, but no, he's good. He's definitely the best part about it. Uh, but the, the crowning achievement of his career is clearly The Last Airbender. Did you forget yeah. he was in that? I did not. I still haven't ever seen The Last Airbender. I mean, I said that in that review that I did for old. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yes. Yeah. Why? Wow, which I'm surprised. Okay. I think you should see it. And here's why. I know this is an aside. Uh, I was talking to Adam too this weekend and I was like, oh man, because a song came on and I was like, wow, whenever I think about Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, I think of the Emoji movie. And he was like, I never saw that. And I was like, I think you should. And here's why. It's a, it's, it is one of the worst movies of all time. Yep, I saw it as well. It is by far one of the worst things I've ever seen right up there with Slender Man. You know my feelings on that. Well, yeah, but like most people can talk about, you know, like Emoji movie at least because, you know, like, it is interesting how terrible it really is. Like, it's not good and it's an, a hard watch, but like, I don't know, get inebriated in whatever way you choose. And, and it's a fun and, experience. Yeah, it's an, I feel like as a, as a film person, it's like, oh, I see everything. It's a necessary experience. Cause like you make a um, top 10 list every year, right? Yeah, not like formally, but for myself, for sure. Uh, do you make a bottom 10 list? Mm, I have before, but. I have it in a long time. See, I make a bottom 10 list and I, I, I detest the people on social media. They're like, oh, you made a worst movies list. Like that's so disrespectful. And like, oh, would you enjoy hating things? And I'm like, well, sometimes movies are bad. And like, it's fun to be like, yeah, this is what I hated the most. And like, who can't like who get off your high horse? I feel like you can be critical and still be respectful. You know, it's not one or the other. Yeah, like I don't know, like movie forty three. That's the type of crap I got. Yeah, in that, my that movie doesn't really deserve any respect. That's one movie that I almost walked out of. Never walked out of a movie, but that was the closest I've ever come for sure. Oh yeah, it's such a gross movie. Um, but my point is, is the last airman is like that. It's that bad. I think it's like the room in the sense that it's like it's so terrible. These performances are so awful, and it doesn't work so much that it's just funny like it crosses that barrier of so bad that it's good i'll probably check it out one of these days and I, well and especially if you know m night and you know how awkward and weird m night is but enough about m night my point is i like dev patel a, a lot and so knowing that he was in this movie uh was exciting for me and also alicia vikander is in this yes she is and it was a surprise to me to see joel edgerton me too. I actually had no idea he was in it walking in there at all. When he popped up on screen, I was very excited. Yeah, there's a couple other faces that I'm sure I've seen in other things, like the guy from Prometheus and whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, no, other than that, not very much. Uh, but yeah, so that's, this is a great transition. We were just talking about top 10 lists. Um, does this movie crack your top 10 list of the year so far? Not only does it crack top 10, it certainly cracks top five and honestly isn't in a running for being my favorite so far this year. Okay, so clearly we loved it. Uh, what's it called? Uh, or you loved it at least. Uh, tell me tell me why, why. Why'd you love it? Uh, I mean, honestly, it's just almost everything about it is just really, really good. I mean, as we said earlier, Dev, Dev Patel is really, really good in this I mean, I haven't seen Slumdog Millionaire, which he got a lot of attention for, but I honestly hope he gets even more with this one because he was great playing that hero role that's kind of hasn't proven himself. So he goes on his hero's journey that we've kind of seen a bunch, but 
it's done so in a pretty unique way and he does so very very well but the major achievement that I loved so much was the cinematography the huge wide shots of all the beautiful nature and everything around him that stuff was just so beautiful to look at and when they went handheld too it was really cool but yeah the cinematography was by far my favorite part so quick question your rating scale is what out of is that a five it's out of five out right of five, yeah that, your video gave a only gave old a three out of 3.5 out of five i i gotta remember that point five because yes. i'll get i'll take every inch i can get with that movie it might um, change it might change yeah. I don't know. oh yeah no i my ratings are always subject to change uh, and and this is especially but here's why i bring it up because i really like this movie i really 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 like this movie i didn't love this movie but i really 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 liked it and right now it's a four out of five i don't i don't do half stars just because i'm like I like having I like having broad, um, you know, areas to put movies in because then you're not splitting hairs like, you know. But this is in the category of it's great. I know it's great, but I didn't really enjoy watching it, and I can't see myself throwing it on again and like leisurely like being excited to watch this. Like I could see myself buying the Blu-ray, and I'm sure if I watch it again and i enjoy it more then i'll bump it up to a five but until that day happens which i'm sure will happen until then it's a four yeah i had similar feelings when i was thinking about doing because yeah i gave it a five out of five and i went back and forth of giving it like a four and a half or maybe even dropping it down to a four but i honestly couldn't find anything that i didn't absolutely love i mean even the set design and everything everything captures that medieval time period really well and honestly the runtime my brother said it did feel long for him I personally didn't feel it just because I think I was just in the story so much and honestly I can see myself rewatching this a lot but I'm honestly a big fan of those fantasy movies too and that honestly that you're kind of in between on that I know you enjoy them but I know you don't absolutely love them so I see how you feel on it too you're you're exactly right fantasy is not necessarily uh, my favorite. Uh, that being said, though, I do I do like fantasy. Like my people always like to make fun of me for not liking Lord of the Rings. Uh, I love Lord of the Rings. I think it's I think it's great. I think it's perfect. I think it's peak uh, fantasy. I, it's great. That being said, it um, it's just not my bag. Mm -hmm. So like where I, where I would rank this for David Lowry for me is um, definitely going to go with the ghost story up at the top. I, that's just a personal thing for me. I, mm -hmm. I think it's so neat and, and a, a crisp 90 minutes too, by the way, which uh, where do you stand on that? Cause that, you're on film Twitter, obviously. Right. Yeah, I am. And, and you, you see the argument about like, Oh, I, I love a good 88 minute runtime. I do. I mean, I, I love a good short in and out. I mean, I'm all down for like a three hour epic sometimes, but if I can watch something get in and out in like 90 minutes, it's my bag. <laughs> no, I, you're exactly right. Devil, devil. <laughs> it's a crisp 80, 85 minutes. Yes, it is. Um, but yeah, no. And if, if, if you want to watch TV, just watch TV, mm -hmm. which that's my problem is I don't like TV. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, oh, I just, I, I like that nice little sweet spot. That being said, yeah, it did feel like it dragged a little bit. Certain things that happened didn't really make, um, didn't really feel too important to me. Uh, the more I talk about it with people and the more I, I, I let it sit with me, because I'm a big believer in like, oh, we need to let it sit. I need to um, let this movie marinate for a bit for me to fully appreciate everything that I feel like it was trying to do. Yeah. That being said, I've only been out for three hours, so maybe it's still the hype, so... <laughs> Take yeah, my you're review fresh. with a grain of salt. I saw it Friday morning. Yep. To, uh, at a theater. But which, by the way, the most well-behaved theater I've been in in a long time. Me too, honestly. Like, there were, it was probably one of the more full theaters I've been to. I think this is like the 11th movie I've seen this year in a theater. And yeah, everyone was really quiet and respectful, which I was surprised by, especially this being an A24 movie where a lot of people are usually really in or they're usually not liking it whatsoever. And there were definitely people in my theater that definitely did not like it. They well, verbally it makes, made it obvious. <laughs> no, it makes sense to me that it, that it would be a well-behaved theater because 
you're not going, you're not, no one's leisurely watching the green Knight. you know, like, Oh, what's on. Oh, that sounds interesting. Like yeah. that's for jungle cruise. I expect jungle cruise to have the most insane, awful theater ever. Um, green Knight. If you're going to that movie, it's cause you know, that movie, which is it's surprising to me. Cause I work at, I work for uh, at a theater. Right. Yep. And uh, Thursday night, there was one showtime at like seven 20 and then Stillwater had one at like 7.30, right? Obviously, Jungle Cruise was throughout the night, like one every 30 minutes. Um, so obviously, there was more total people at Jungle Cruise. But Stillwater had a good dozen to like maybe 20 people tops. But Green Knight had 64. That's awesome. Like, it, and I got there early to do the audit. And it was like, most of them were already there. So these are like committed movie people like i saw people you, you like super yaki the the merch account oh yeah, yeah 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 i saw a guy wearing one of those shirts uh obviously he didn't take my survey because he hates me um <laughs> but i i told him like i went I, I went out of my way to be like nice shirt guy and he was like oh wow thanks and then, and then afterwards he was like one of the more rude people about it um but yeah no a lot of people saw this movie do you know how much money it made this weekend i do not know I can say, though, that I was shocked to see there were probably at least 20 to 30 people, which, especially in Michigan, at five o'clock in the afternoon, I was not expecting to see that many people in there, but there were probably at least 20 people in the theater. So, yeah, I think this movie actually has some legs that I was not expecting it to have when it comes to just the audience in general. Like, I was expecting it to be pretty low, low attendance. That is interesting, though, because I, yeah, like, my my job is as such that like I am in one of the places where there is supposed to be one of the larger uh, amounts of people. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, I'll, t I'll tell you what, man, like even like, like this had a bigger crowd than like snake eyes or old or like any of the, that, you know, like mid range blockbuster stuff. Cause yeah. this is like a mid range. This isn't, this isn't a small indie movie. This, this is like the midsummer of the, well, Midsummer was like a Fourth of July thing, right? Right around there, I think. Yeah, I think it was Which, right around uh, July, was, August. Uh, Zola this year. Did you see at Zola? I did not. Do you like Spring Breakers? I have mixed feelings about Spring Breakers. Then you'll have mixed feelings about at Zola. <laughs> All right. Um, as as a uh, former Florida resident, I think you will appreciate at Zola um, because it takes place in Tampa. Uh, and uh, that's a big part of the plot. Like I, I remember seeing a Publix and be like, okay, I, I feel at home. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's definitely um, very crude, but it is very like dreamlike, almost like like the vibe. I, I hate saying that because it sounds pretentious, but like just the vibe of it is so, and it's an, a, a, once again, crisp 90 minute runtime. So I would definitely recommend checking out when you don't have to pay for it. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, yeah, no. So this is, uh, I'm just um, praising the indie market. Uh, what's it called? So I looked it up in the weekend. It made 6.7 million. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised it's that high. I was expecting like three or 4 million, honestly, at most. Um, yeah, no, it's good. I mean, Jungle Cruise made like 30, which like, that makes sense. You're selling RPX and 3D tickets. But then again, I would rather see this in RPX than see Jungle Cruise. Jungle Cruise looks ugly. Yeah, like I want to see Jungle Cruise, but it's definitely not high up on my list right now. It's one of those things where it's like, uh, I have a list. Uh, do you? You had AMC, right? Yeah, I did for right? a bit. I don't have do anything you, right do now. You now. Nope. I don't you even have, have any. The only thing I can get right now is the one that I go to. They have one that's like three movies a week, which is similar to a list. So I can get something similar again, but right now I don't have anything. Is it like Cinemark? no this one is celebration interesting okay i've heard of that before though um what's it go yeah i'm still rocking it with the amc um which is fine but um yeah no i um a lot of times if something's playing in dolby that will like be the deciding factor like oh it's in dolby fine you know sure i guess i miss i miss dolby so much the matrix really changed my life in dolby <laughs> Oh yeah. No, I remember th this is how much Dolby matters to me. It was opening weekend of Quiet Place 2 and Cruella and they were, believe it or not, uh, cringe. 
I mean, it's a good movie. Krill is a good movie, but that was the one that was showing in Dolby and not Quiet Place 2. Yeah, it's, that's a travesty right there. Yeah, Quiet I mean, Place 2 is an IMAX. I mean, yeah, I, I enjoyed Cruella a lot, but Quiet Place 2, especially with it being a Quiet Place 2, deserves all that sound and everything. I, I, I completely agree. Um, what's it called? So with The Green Knight, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and I guess it like, I, I brought my girlfriend to go watch it and she she really wasn't into it. And I it's funny because I could tell from the get i was like oh she's not gonna she's really not gonna care much for this my my weird thing about this movie is i remember hearing people on twitter saying wow it's nothing like the trailer and after watching it i was like no that's uh, exactly what i thought yeah i'd never watched the trailer before going in but i watched it like a few minutes before this actually and a lot of it is in the trailer a lot of the movie anyway I just remember a lot of the Fox, which I have no idea what the Fox is about, what's going on with the Fox. Um, what's it called? A lot of these things I, I had to like research or like really talk to people who like cared about it more than I did to like really understand, which I'm, I'm happy there's layers to this movie. I just feel like it definitely doesn't have mass appeal. No, it's definitely like it's from like the Arthurian or Arthurian like medieval like storytelling time. Like that's where the story originated from like he's supposed to be like i want to say he's supposed to be king arthur's nephew or whatever like that's what the whole thing was was that he's like the green he's going to fight the green knight and like that guy was king arthur or whatever that was his uncle and, like, he's which going i'm to happy with the restraint the because they didn't go like oh wow you're king arthur you're this you're that like i didn't find that out that they were those knights until after i watched the movie that's what i like about a24 is they the studio usually get scripts that don't try to hold your hand and they're very experimental and they let people actually think for themselves rather than just be like here's everything in your face (laughs) no um i i I really like it's funny because it's one of those things where i didn't really know that i liked it like for sure until the ending because i really liked the ending and i was like okay yeah i like this well that's what i'll say too is i knew right when it ended i was like i love this but there are and like other people around me are like i hated that and i was like yeah you hated the ending because it didn't give you what you wanted <laughs> well uh sp- i mean spoilers I, who cares spoilers obviously these are all spoilers um but spoilers for twilight breaking dawn part two have you seen that a long time ago but yeah all right i recently re well, I recently watched them all for the first time because i got them on black friday last year for uh eight bucks for five movies like that was such a deal yeah why not um, and I, I remember the fifth i i really didn't like them and i was trying to watch them in a this is so bad that it's good kind of way uh, but the last one really pissed me off because at the end i'm like okay i have no idea why anything's happening i know i have no idea who anybody really even is or why anyone wants the things that they want so yes fight and like let's have this big dumb action because if in confusion yeah violence uh, ensues but for them just to be like, oh, that was all just a dream or like a vision of what could have happened. And now we're just going to be like, cool. Because then I'm like, oh, so this is just a big waste of time. Uh, that being said, I feel differently here because that was there to enforce the theme. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I really like the theme. Me too. I'm, well, I'm a big themes guy. So I'm like, like, oh, you had something to say? Oh, cool. Like, <laughs> I like you now. Um, and just, yeah, his whole hero's journey and um, this whole thing was a, you know, well, not coming of age. I guess it was kind of a coming of age. because It was coming in into him, him becoming a knight and basically stepping into being a king almost too. Like, and like, a, good, just... like a good person. Like he realizes like, it's not about, um, you know, the rise fire it's about being a good person and then each one of the things that he does along the way is about him learning to be a good person if he was not well he was nice to the ghost skeleton lady right Mm -hmm. uh and like that that paid dividends but like i don't know if at the beginning with the guy the weaselly guy who was like like here go this direction oh you're gonna pay me and like like if he was nice to him would he have not you know uh, attacked him maybe i think it was a little bit more too about his bravery too the whole time like throughout all of the trials and tribulations that he went to he kind of just kept persevering and didn't give up 
and that's mm-hmm. what kind of made him into becoming the knight that he became and the bravery and the strength that he eventually takes mm-hmm. on uh what's it did you read the poem uh no okay it's based off a poem yeah um yeah from an anonymous author it says that at the beginning which by the way uh could do, could you read anything in this movie a few of them i missed some of them i got like the scene header type stuff for sure but some of them were like blinking you miss it almost <laughs> and no, they're hard exactly. to read too which lends itself to a rewatch because then i mean they look beautiful sure but like i i can't read i don't know how, well i just don't know how to read in general um but <laughs> no but um I do want to read the poem, but then I started researching about the poem and it's like, yeah, a lot of it's just about hunting and they use a lot of hunting like verbiage that like is not used today. And I was like, then I don't want to waste my time. You know, I don't want to waste my time reading this old poem that doesn't matter. And like, yes, the movie's cool and it looks beautiful and I, I get what it's trying to say. And I, I like, I like the plot and everything, but like, that doesn't mean I have to read it. Like after I watched old, I was like, oh, I really want to read Sandcastles. Yeah, because I feel like I, I I believe there's possible it's possible that they did the story better in the graphic novel, even though old is perfect. Um, but like I, I I just I don't know like Watchmen. I was like I want to read the gra- I love this movie, but I want to read the graphic novel because you know I want to see how they do it. But I can't believe I would enjoy reading this thousand word epic poem more than watching this beautiful David Lowry movie. Yeah, I trust that David adapted it better probably for today's audiences. It's probably pretty dense and probably the old English is probably not much fun to read either. So I would assume David did his job and probably did it justice. So maybe I'll look at it, but maybe we'll just leave that one alone. <laughs> uh, a couple things I do want to touch on. Um, a, uh, Alicia Vikander played two different characters or did she? yeah she i mean yeah (laughs) it's hard because she i mean i think they're supposed to be very very similar because but at the same time aria she basically plays the same character the same just different haircuts and Mm -hmm. but i still love her a lot (laughs) that was one of the tests that i i more so understood which which leads me to my next point uh did you see my letterbox review i did yeah um that that cum shot yeah i read that and then didn't i like liked your review didn't understand it and then when i saw it i was like yeah i know what he's talking about (laughs) i had a really amazing conversation um with someone after the movie i was like so what do you think they used to make the cum because it's not cum obviously like there's no way there's no way on heaven or earth that that's cum no what is it like and then he was i think someone said glue and i was like no because it's not like opaque means you can't see through it but it did look like kind of clearish you know what i mean it was definitely some art pa's job to figure out how to make <laughs> and they had to it's do that that was their job for the day. <laughs> that we we dive into on hard um uh what's it go we're hard about cum uh <laughs> so <laughs> but um yeah i just thought that was a funny shot Cause like, also like I was so confused on what was happening. That's cause I knew that happened. Cause after I, uh, when I was working on it the night before someone said like, Oh yeah, something about like them having like some kind of sexual intercourse and like his jizz. Like I, I remember hearing about him coming. So I was expecting a cum scene. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like uh, eagerly, by the way. Um, I just thought that that was funny. Uh, my next thing I want to ask is apparently there's a right answer to this. Uh, what do you think? happened after they cut to black well after they you know you know after the movie ended like did he did he behead him yeah yeah. basically yeah i i do think he did yeah right yeah i do too it's like yeah you learned your lesson but the lesson is still that it's over (laughs) well that's the thing i um because i i remember watching it and being like oh okay so he yeah of course well, I was mad, which like, no, I'm falling right into what the movie, I'm feeling things the movie wants me to feel. Cause I remember when he first shows up and he's like, Hey, so hit me. And however you hit me is how I'm going to hit you in a year from now. And I'm like, Oh dude, just like barely nick him. Like, don't even, don't even hit him actually yeah. cut off his hair, you know, like, like, what are you doing? And then he's just like, like, Oh, what are you doing? You're, you're crazy. Uh, uh, let me chop off your head. 
Like, I don't know. I just thought that was like, you're a Dude. stupid ass. Well, that is the only thing is that it shows who he was at the beginning, an immature playing on his emotions kid who's just like, all right, this guy's being an asshole, so I'm just going to blah. Because he gets so mad that he's being so disrespectful to him that he thinks that he's he's he earned respect from this knight already for some reason. So he's like, oh, fuck this guy. Bah. That's how I saw it anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I just, it just, uh, yeah, well, like, no, it made me upset in like a good way. Like I was like, I was really into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then at the end of the movie, like he's like, all right, well, it's time for me to cut your head off and whatever. Which by the way, also, why not just say no to this game? Why do we have to play this game? Uh, also, apparently it was the mom that was making it happen because she's a witch, but I'm like, I was confused by that. Yeah, I was confused by that too because she's like the, I guess she's like the head witch and she's like King Arthur's sister. But yeah, I don't know why she basically set this in motion for her, I guess, for her son to basically try to be better, but ultimately die. That like, <laughs> you know, like that makes sense to me because yeah. it does work if he, but that only works if he lives if he dies then that, so i guess i believe that he does live but like it literally ends with him saying off with your head but like apparently the thing that my friend pointed out to me was he's smiling when he says that yeah i think it's done on purpose for you to basically interpret your own ending like a lot of a24 shit does <laughs> mm-hmm. but honestly in my opinion i think if he if the lesson has to be learned, I think we have to follow through with everything that's promised. Fair, fair. <laughs> that's I just, how I saw the ending anyway. No, I agree with you, but like uh, the plot makes more sense to me if he doesn't get die. So I, I guess I guess I'm going to think that he doesn't. Um, but like, yes, it is totally up to um the viewer unless it's like an inception thing where it's like oh it's up to the viewer but like actually no like <laughs> there's a real thing that happened um, and honestly both endings are very satisfying to me if he gets killed cool if he lives cool he learned a lesson and hopefully he cool. continues to be that great king or whatever he takes the mantle i believe so at least if it follows that dream i don't know yeah not nah, regardless and and you know what I, I, i'm really happy we talked about this because i I'm, I'm gonna echo something i said earlier the more I talk about it, the more I, I like it. And I think I do. I, I really just need to see it again. And the sad thing about it is I feel like I would watch it again. Like this, like I would watch it again, like soon. Cause like I have friends who haven't seen it, who really want to see it that I would love to go watch it with. But I also like, I haven't seen Jungle Cruise and like, I want to catch that in Dolby. Cause I like Dolby. Suicide Squad comes out next week. Yeah. So I have to see that. And I'm, I'm sure I'm going to see it twice. Cause I heard it's perfect. Uh, still water looks um uh looks bad but like i'm also did you read the amanda knox twitter thread mm. um yeah so she did, came up with a thread on twitter like the day it was released and she was like oh fuck this movie like they didn't they paint me as a bad guy you know like all this is just condemning it and now and which had the opposite effect on me because now i'm like oh well how was she represented like yeah, oh, no, i want to i want to see it now too i had no interest but now I'm in. Yeah, it's no, look it up. Amanda Knox, uh, K N O X. Um, and um, I don't know anything about the saga of her story, but all I know is that uh, apparently Matt Damon's character definitely voted for Trump. That's all I I read an article that was about that. Um, like they confirmed it. Like, but apparently in the movie, someone asks him if he voted for Trump, and he says no. And I'm like, so now I'm confused. Now I, I need to see it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, if I would have, and also I, I'm late on something. I didn't see Purge or Boss Baby, but I can miss that. I didn't um, either. And then I think that's, oh, Pig. A lot of people are talking to me about Pig. Yeah, I haven't been able to see that one yet. That one's a little bit further away for me to be able to see it in a theater because it's far away because Michigan sucks like that. Oh, ah. well, I, my friend gave me a screener, but I still haven't, I haven't watched it. But it is a crisp 90 minute runtime. Beautiful beautiful yes uh and i hear it's actually great so i probably will check that out especially since i've had I, I know people who have seen it so let me know if you see it um but what's it called uh other than that though i will i will certainly watch this again i will i guarantee black friday when the blu-ray like blu-ray, blu-ray is probably going to come out that week right probably yeah it's usually like three months so yeah 
Yeah, so like I'm gonna get the Blu-ray of it, and it's gonna be beautiful. And I'll I'm probably gonna be I'll want to get the steel books. I guarantee they're gonna make some pretty art on that. Yeah. Uh, that being said, though, I still can't see this being praised more than uh, the Old Man and the Gun, even because I even that I think is so cute. Uh, I've been meaning to rewatch it recently, like show uh, Lauren it because um, what's it called? I, I just it's such an adorable, like almost like a, a like a romance. Well, and little fun fact at the end when he's at the prison, and he's like leaving the outside of the prison. That prison is actually like five minutes away from my parents' house. It's right in Jackson, Michigan. Oh, wow. So you really wait, so they actually they shot it all there, right? Uh they just that oh, just part, I think. Just the prison, oh. the out like literally the exterior of like Robert Redford walking out, I think. But really cool shot because I reckon I see it all the time. Oh wow. That's interesting. I, I the only movie I've had that experience with is the Florida Project. Did you ever drive by any of that shit? I don't think so. Oh, I've I grew up an hour away from all that shit. So yeah, I know all that stuff. Um, great movie. Uh, but yeah, um, do you oh, what do you, do you have any um uh, any more? Do you want to do final thoughts? Uh just that I really really enjoyed it, and yeah, I'm honestly looking forward to rewatching it. I don't think I'll probably catch it again in theaters, but I definitely probably am gonna get the steel book and everything and. Yeah, just everything about it, I really enjoyed. I might not absolutely love it. Like I said, the rating might change. And if so, you can follow me on Letterboxd and see if it changes. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, so if it's not really... your favorite movie of the year, then what is? You know. And why is it Fast 9? It... <laughs> as much as I would love it to be Fast 9, it's certainly not. Honestly, let me just look at this real quick, but it might really be Green Knight. I'm about to look at the movies I've seen in theaters. That's probably the top list. And in... well, because that's the thing. I watched it. I was like, "Wow, this is really good." It's not perfect, but um, like I was, but everyone else was uh, saying it was this masterpiece. And then I went to go. You know how I do my rankings on Twitter because I just mm -hmm. I like doing a power rankings throughout the year. I, I just because I used to be like, "Oh, I won't even think about it. I won't even think about my top ten because I want to be able to do it at the end of the year." But like why not make it like a weekly fun thing for myself? Um, and so I could see the evolution of how my opinion changed. And um, i ended up putting it at the seven spot right behind fast nine. Um, and yeah, I, I still hold true that that's probably where I'd put it. If I rewatch it and give it a five out of five, I could see it jumping past fast nine past spiral. I, that being said, I loved spiral. You and me both, dude. I mean, a lot of people were negative on it, but I had a blast watching Spiral. I bought, I just bought the 4K Steelbook too, and the Steelbook's beautiful. I don't buy, I don't buy new Blu-rays because I wait till Black Friday. But my brother got it for me because he wanted to watch it for my birthday, and so I have it, and it's beautiful. Uh, and I am gonna rewatch it because I'm gonna show Lauren. But here's the thing: um, I remember I watched it late alone. I had it spoiled for me. So I, I knew, I knew while well, I worked on it, you know, so if I don't see it in the first like week, like then I'm, I'm dead or yeah. like literally the first day, like Friday morning, if I don't go to the movies, I'm dead. Uh, but yeah, so I had it spoiled for me, watched it still. I, I was crying during the third act, like the climax of the movie, because I was so perfect. I, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I haven't rewatched it yet since the theater, but it's something I'm looking forward to really soon. Yeah. Um, what's it called? Um, yeah. Let me know when you do, cause I, I, I would love to talk about that one, but um, yeah, I could see this jumping that cause this is more artistic value. Uh, but I think my four on the year is, uh, is Judas and I, I don't see it passing Judas. And then my top three is kind of a lock for uh, Mitchell's in the Heights and old. I still need to watch Mitchell's. I have not watched it yet. Dude. It's maybe, it's Maybe we talk about that next time because I still I would, haven't watched I would love it. To. I will rewatch it if, 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 if that's what it takes because I wouldn't, I've, I've said this to people several times. I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised if Mitchell's ends up being my favorite movie of the year. That's what my brother told me too. He's like, you need to watch it because I loved it and I think you'll love it even more than I did. Well, because it just has staying power. Like I've already rewatched it like at least twice. So if I keep rewatching it at this pace, because I've only seen In the Heights twice uh, and then um like I didn't even see it opening weekend because I saw an early, uh, like a um, not a press screening, but like an early screening. Um, yeah. And then when it came out 
I didn't watch it until like the last week that it was in Dolby and I haven't watched it again since and it's on HBO Max, but like I, it's my vendetta. I don't want to watch any of the HBO Max new movies. Yeah. Unfortunately, I've been the HBO Max person for a few of those Warner Brothers things. I actually never even finished Conjuring 3. I only got to see half of it and tried to finish it, fell asleep. And then I woke up at like one o'clock in the morning, the day it expired. And I was like, damn, I was like, I didn't like it, but I want to see the ending of it. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. Um, But in the Heights, I, I loved the music and in the Heights so much. I wish I would have got to see it in a theater. And I'm really sad about the box office because I feel like I am also to blame, but (laughs) that being said, I, (laughs) I love the music so much and I really can't wait to watch it again. Yeah. Um, but that being said, though, there's plenty of year left, and um, yeah, and, and what a great year. What a great year it's been already, because I was really sad last year making my top 10 list, like, oh, is that really, like, is this all that's going to make it? Like, I don't know, but um, yes, so um, thank you for joining me. Do you have anything you would like to plug? Uh, yeah, you can find me on YouTube at the Film Fan Reviews, uh, my letterbox account, Stephen Barton II, you can find me on there, and all of my socials are also on my YouTube channels. So you can follow me on any of those. And yeah, thank you so much for having me, bro. Yes. And anytime, anything you want to do, I'm just desperate for people to talk to. Dude, about my- I, I am available 90% of the time. So anytime you want to talk about anything, we can do this. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Go watch The Green Knight. Uh, what's it called? And um, I think more movies should have uh, this much come. Thank you.